As dialogue surrounding the 2023 presidency resurfaces, Ohaneze Ndibo, the Apex Igbo Social Cultural Organization, has vowed to go all out for the actualization of an Igbo president. The organization expressed optimism that God would make it possible. The group also stated that it regrets the unpatriotic acts of some Igbo politicians sponsoring unpatriotic persons for the 2023 elections. Joining us for a conversation on this is Anthony Ob Obineme, the Southeast Coordinator, Diaspora Liaison Officer, Pan Nigeria Presidency of Igbo Extraction Coalition. He joins us via phone. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. And of course, joining us via Skype is political analyst Francis Chilaka. Pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you very much. All right, let me, let me start with you, um, Anthony. As the conversations around the 2023 presidency continue, Hanese has vowed that this is going to be a real thing. What's your take on the whole Igbo presidency agenda? Thank you very much for bringing me on live on this evening TV program. Our organization, Pam Nigeria Presidency, of Iwe Fashion Coalition MPF, a social political pressure group canvassing for President of Nigeria of Igbo Extraction come 2023, and is also an umbrella group uniting and assimilating every other group having the same agenda. We have covered every state in Nigeria and also extended our network to so many communities in the diaspora. And our management team is set up from every geopolitical region of this nation. We intend to achieve our project through consultation, dialogue, and negotiation. We have now engaged our discussions with every registered political parties in Nigeria to actualize our set goal. And the reason for doing this is for all the political parties, more especially the two major parties, PDP and APC, to see a very good reason why they should consider to seat their 2023 presidential candidate to Igbo. It's not that it's not difficult. A repeat of such happened in 2019, 1999, as to say, when Olu Obatanjo contested with the Olu Falaye, then and from Yoruba nation. And Nigeria has voted for them. We are Obasanjo became the president of Nigeria. He repeated himself in 2019 when President Mohamed Buhari contested with Atiku Abubakar. And people voted massively. You, um, you need to be able to summarize. Uh, um, um, can you hear me? So, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, please, you need to be as brief as possible in your summary. Let's just get um, a summary of your thought on the uh, Igbo presidency. Let's just uh, get that started, please. Thank you. So, as I, as I said that we have involved ourselves in consultation, dialogue, and negotiation, it is going to cut across every geopolitical zone, all the political leaders, religious leaders, National rulers to make sure that every bank be on deck. This is the Aquarian call. We are not going to do it alone. We have been doing this and it's working. So we want to see an Igbo man becoming the president in 2027 who will make sure that the shortfall of economic decadence in this nation will be corrected. You see, an Igbo man who is qualified and who is competent, when the opportunity is being given, we will see the magic being done. All right, uh, Mr. Obi Neme. Let, let's bring in uh, Mr. Chilaka to the conversation. Mr. Chilaka, are you with us? Yeah. Okay, so I, I, wanna, I, I don't want to ask a general opinion now. I want to ask your opinion regarding the, you know, the, the comments that the presidency has already been decreed by God. I need you to address this God factor in our nation's politics. Should religion continue to be entwined with politics as we have it today? Well, the bearer of our problem is religion. It's become a very serious issue in the uh, polity of Nigeria. We need to draw a line 
And we need to understand that even when you want to drag, drag God into politics, you must do what you're supposed to do first. So saying that God has decreed it, I don't know when God did that, but I would say this, you know, um, power is not given, power is taken. It is written in the same scripture that everybody is quoting. So if the Igbos want the presidency of Nigeria, they must begin to work towards it. You can't be asking for restructuring, asking for Biafra, and asking for presidency at the same time. You can't get all of them. The Igbos must decide what they want. And the Igbos must go back home, sit down on the round table, and decide what they really want, and then come out to say what they want. Right now, the Igbos don't even know what they want in the structure called Nigeria. All right, let's look at the group's position about some story uh, that the leadership uh, was planning to have negotiations with uh, some prominent political figures in the country towards achieving uh, the same objective. Uh, they're saying that is deceitful, it is untrue. Is a coalition, um, a negotiation between um, leaders that have the same interest, is that really a bad thing? I'll take that question to Mr. Obi Neme. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, the gentleman there has said his opinion, but I want to assure you that Igbos have agreed. We have one voice. Speaking at this angle, speaking at what organization Igbo is okay, saying. I, I need to interject. When you say, when you say um, the Igbos are speaking with one voice, what do you say about the group that is called Ohaneze Youth Council that has been disowned by the Ohaneze Ndibo, who describes the leader with some unprintable names um, as somebody who is looking to get some, uh, that's Okechuku uh, Isinguzo now, as a power-hungry mind, let's put it more mildly. Uh, they also lambast some Igbo politicians who they say are sponsors of a non-recognized youth uh, wing. Some would actually say this is a sign that there is a division within the house of the people who say they want uh, are united from. So that doesn't that poke hole in what you're saying? Yeah, yeah thank you. A means of what we are pursuing you for. You should remember that many political enclaves, there must be people that we disagree with your opinion and those that we agree. So I'm not going to speak for an SND. When the leadership says that they are no more comfortable with a particular section of their organization, that they have issued a press statement or that. So it is final. So anybody who is uh, definitely himself to be relevant is doing that to his own detriment. That does not mean that Igbos haven't, haven't gotten one voice. And as Igbo is speaking, they are in the front line for Nigeria to give Igbo chance to produce the president of this nation. So in a family, when a wife and a husband is having an issue, and they, 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 they agree to settle. That doesn't mean that they are not in peace. So we both have gotten one voice to pilot this affair. That's why some Nigeria presidency of Igbo extraction is in existence. Let me say something about what the gentleman there said. I'm not going against him because he's saying his opinion. When President uh, um, Good Jonathan was the president of this nation, there was Niger Delta militant agitation for their republic. One president, one president um, Obasanjo, was leading this nation. There was OPC agitation for the Republic of Oduduwa. Now that the current president of Mohammed Harris is leading this nation, there are pockets of countries there where the, the Boko Haram, they are talking about uh, the Islamic state. So all this agitation, including the African agitation, wouldn't be a distraction in an entity called Nigeria, whereby we are talking about political equity. Okay, and I, when I apologize. You about I keep cutting you off, Mr. Obinemen. I really apologize. I keep cutting you off, but we are time constrained. And we have another guest joining us in the studio. He was with us in the previous segment. That's uh, legal practitioner, Libora Soshoma. Thank you very much uh, for joining us again. Uh, this is not a new conversation for you. You've actually done an advocacy on this. want to hear your thought as quickly as possible on the issue of uh, Igbo presidency. Yeah, um, I want to agree with uh, um, both guests. Um, uh, that first and foremost, um, in 1999, um, we had um, the agitations for, you know, the presidency to move to the southeast, uh, uh, southwest. You know, you, the two contending candidates were from the southwest. 
Uh, but then also when um, we had agitation that um, power should shift to the north, also um, it wasn't as if uh, they, they fought for it. Yeah, like we say, power is not serve a la carte. So it would be equitable to actually, you know, look at um, the side of the southeast now and say, look, irrespective of what happened, there's need for power to move there. But the southeast also, I mean, agreeing with the other speaker, the southeast also must learn to put his house in, house in order. Uh, because um, um, you cannot, in all honesty, you know, leave your house in disarray and expect that, you know, somebody from outside will come put it together for you. And, and so that's basically what, what I believe. We should look at it from an equitable doctrine of also, look, let's go, let it go around. And then the, those who are, who are to receive, the recipient should also learn to put their house in order. It shouldn't just be dropped on their laps. And Ohanez Edigbo should also be uh, very, um, you know, firm on this because there are a lot of contending issues uh, all right, right um, um so shima thank you very much uh, for your quick thought on the program uh, we, we we go quickly to mr francis in 30 seconds could you please uh, sum up your thought on this matter because you're out of time well my thought has always been the same i will never change it if the Igbos want power the Igbos must sit down and do the right thing i am not interested in who becomes the president because the governors we've had in the southeast have not done anything that would make me think that they would do better if they're given the presidency. I want somebody who can move this country forward, somebody who has what it takes to take Nigeria to the next level. I'm not interested in where you come from. I'm not interested in your state. I'm not interested in your religion. I'm interested in somebody that can give me a Nigeria I'll be proud of. Thank you Thank very you. much, Mr. Chilaka, for your thoughts and your time on the program. You're welcome. And of course, uh, we go to uh, Mr. Anthony Obineme, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. And uh, finally, Mr. Liboros, thank you very much for joining us on the program, even though the time is pretty short. All right, we'll take a quick break for Plus Reports, and when we return, I'll be giving my take to stay with us. Nigerian media practitioners have been taxed to fight fake news which is causing more harm than good. This was at Benin City, the Edo state capital, where the press were commended for their efforts in ensuring good governance, fighting corruption, and informing the public about recent happenings in the country. The combination of political polarization and technological changes today have over facilitated, over -facilitated the rapid speed of verified information, uncoordinated hate speech, misogyny, as well as unverified fake news, often leading to disproportionate restriction on freedom of expression in ever-growing numbers of countries in the world. Free information is essential to help us face, understand, think about and overcome the crisis, we must join hands with government of our various states in the world to fight the infodemic of rumors and disinformation which is exacerbating the COVID-19 pandemic and thereby putting lives at risk. We sacrifice our today for your tomorrow. I want to plead with all of you don't give up. If you do, there will be no hope. Any reasonable leader would definitely know that before anything, news done by the midwives who are the journalists are the first and confront. But sometimes you refer to it the fourth estate. I would have said the first because you come forth before every other thing. Mr. Oju Zokalu was found guilty of all the 39 count charge filed against him by the EFCC and sentenced to 12 years in prison. The Supreme Court today dismissed that ruling. The man is most likely going to return to his seat of power in no time. He has said as much. He now speaks of fighting for justice and his understanding of what love truly is.
Let us be reminded in the euphoria of the moment that this man was not acquitted by the Supreme Court because there was new evidence exonerating him from the allegations the EFCC proved enough in a court of law to warrant the sentencing he got by job George, whose work elevated him to a higher position, but on a technicality. We should not forget that. All I can think of is, here we go again. Another worrying precedent has been set by our nation's apex court. For a layman like me, something is very, very wrong with our justice system and I am honestly at a loss as to how we can fix it when the game is no longer about what you can prove but how you didn't put on a tie. That's my take tonight. Thank you for watching the program. It returns same time on Monday. Until then, please be well.